Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge YouTube channel and to highlights of the UAE Tour Stage 5 2021. This was pretty much the last stage where the GC could be up for grabs. Obviously, Tade Pogacar is in the leader's jersey at the moment. I think about 43, 45 seconds ahead of Adam Yates, a minute and three seconds ahead of Juan Almeida. This is the last mountain stage, Stage 5. 169 Ks from Fajira Marine Club to Jabal Jais. 21.5 K. 5.5% climb, Jabal Jais. The first part of the stage was not particularly difficult, and the climb itself is very consistent gradient between 5 and 6%. No real steep pinches or extended steep pinches. So it's going to be very difficult for Ineos to try and make up 43 seconds on Tade Pogacar. I mean, they'd need the stage bonus. They'd need Pogacar to crack completely. His team did not be able to help him. So Pogacar was right to be pretty happy at the start of this stage. He was in prime position to keep that leader's jersey. Alejandro Valverde, in previous years, we'd be saying he'd be the favourite for this stage, which would probably end in a reduced bunch mountain sprint. He's won in the UAE before, but he's just not looking as good this year, Valverde. An early breakaway tried to go up the road, initiated by Ajdua Citroën. Israel Startup Nation were really keen to get Omer um, uh, Goldstein in the break, but then it was actually Matthias Frank, and I think Giacomo Nizzolo. Nizzolo went across to Frank, or with him, in a second breakaway attempt and then it's all just went back to the peloton i think and frank was on his own three minutes ahead of the peloton comment down below what matthias frank is having an extended conversation with the tv motorbike about i couldn't make it out on the international feed he was eventually joined by a pretty strong breakaway group actually thomas de kent with teammate roger kluger to help him set pace on the flat before the climb alex dowsett in the same role for israel startup nation helping omar goldstein for the climb you can see they were getting into the more mountainous area later in the stage. Mountain goats need only apply like Tade Pogacar. Would he go for the stage? Adam Yates as well. Were Ineos going to try something? Harper and Vingegaard, Nielsen Paulus, Caleb Ewan obviously a candidate for the stage. But Ineos clearly stated their intentions to bring back this breakaway. They worked super hard with Roe, Ganna, Amador for a lot of this stage, taking upon themselves to keep the break in check, presumably trying to make sure that then their mountain train later, comprised of Sosa, Rivera and Martinez, could set pace on this climb to set up Adam Yates at least going for the stage or attacking Tade Pogacar. But the break seemed to be working really well. I mean, it was mainly Amador and Ghana, who are super strong, swapping off on the front, but the break had at least eight riders working well before the start of the Jebel Jais climb. And on that climb, an interesting thing happened in the Ineos mountain train. Ivan Sosa was before Brana Rivera today. On Jebel Hafit, it was the other way around. And I think this is where the problem started for Ineos today. Sosa was not supposed to pull for 90 seconds, two minutes. It was supposed to be a long pull, but he couldn't do it. And we know he's come from Provence, where it's super cold, now to the heat in the UAE. Maybe that's a factor. But his inability to pull for a very long time made it really difficult for Ineos to make this climb super hard for everybody. And that was pretty much the end of Adam Yates' chances to make up any significant time on Pogacar on this climb. But Lusenko skipped away from his breakaway companion pretty early on the climb actually he went solo with over 15 k's to go and then Ineos pulled with Brandon Rivera with just Martinez left after him for Adam Yates in their train for a really long time nice performance from Brandon Rivera seems like a definite improvement from him at this UAE tour the gap to Lutsenko from the peloton led by Ineos was 90 seconds with 16 k's to go and you could tell the pace in the peloton was pretty easy. It was a massive group. Everyone was looking pretty casual. And the gap wasn't going down very quickly to Lutsenko because it was basically a one-on-one -on -one TT between him and Brandon Rivera on the Jabal Jais. I think the headwind made it really difficult for a smaller guy like Rivera and Sosa before him. You see Bora lined up behind them. Would they go for the stage with Ben Zweihoff, the former mountain biker who joined them this year? But with 4Ks to go, the gap was still over 40 seconds to Lutsenko. He's been out there on his own for nearly half an hour at this point, and this was reminding me of stage six of the tour last year where he won a Monteguel on a climb where Ineos also set a slow tempo, according to riders in Yumbo Visma, said it wasn't a particularly hard tempo. And despite them bringing the gap down to a pretty small margin to Lutsenko there, they weren't then able to close it or weren't interested in closing it. But in the UAE to a stage five, the difference was attacks started happening about four and a half Ks. Vihoff first for Bora. They realized, wow, Ineos aren't bringing this back. Then Nibali countered with 3.2 Ks to go. Still a 30 second gap to Lutsenko. Fantastic timing from Nibali, you can see everyone looked at each other. The GC favorites and Pagacha weren't particularly interested, so it was more riders like Han Van Hocke, who you can see for Lotto Sedal here, trying to get across to Nibali, and then Jumbo Visma, I think with Wingergaard, pacing to get back to Han Van Hocke and Nibali. 
1.4 k's to go. Lutsenko still up there with a 14 second gap on the Nibali group, 20 second gap on the Peloton until Joao Almeida absolutely launched it with Sepp Kuss on his wheel. Super strong attack from Joao Almeida. He even gapped, I think, Yates and Pagacha until maybe Wingergaard or Yates wound him back. I think with a teammate setting pace for him, Almeida definitely would have come top three on this stage. And I think having to attack and close that gap early going for the stage win eventually cost him, unfortunately. But then once he was caught by the GC favourites, Yates and Pagacha, Yates, by the way, who hasn't attacked or done anything to go for the stage win despite Ineos working all day, it was then Jumbo Visma with numbers kind of amusingly, both attacking at the same time. You see Wingard going to the right as we look at it, and then Sepp Kuss going to the left, maybe attacking, maybe just following Yates, and then Wingard stops because he sees Kuss moving up on the other side of the road. He eventually does attack, and Kuss waits in the bunch, and you can see Lutschenko just absolutely suffering as he's about to come onto the Flamme Rouge. Strong attack from Wingard. Nick Schultz for Team Bike Exchange was trying to close the gap to his wheel, but Jonas Wingard was able to close down gradually this gap to Lutschenko, eventually catching up to him with about 270 meters. Lutschenko, I don't know what he said to him here or what Wingergaard said to him. Lutschenko was pretty much done, and instead of attacking him straight away, I think Wingergaard did the right thing of keeping pacing because he knew that the group behind him was not very far, and if he was to win, they needed to still maintain that gap, eventually attacked Lutschenko with about 50 meters to go. Yates, Igita, and Pagacha sprinting behind him, Pagacha taking second, but a massive win for Jonas Wingergaard. I think his second World Tour level win, a perfectly timed attack from him. Good tactics today from Jumbo Visma, actually. Kuss attacked too early on Jabel Hafid, but it was fantastic timing and use of their numbers today on Jabel Jace, and a big win for the Dane, Jonas Wingergaard. We'll talk about him more in a second. The riders who I think will be ruining what happened today are Sergio Aguita and Joa Almeida. I think Aguita had to do a lot of work to close gaps in the last two kilometers. Almeida, similarly, fair thought, for Alexei Lutschenko. Heartbreak for him being caught, I think, in like the last 200 metres by Vingegaard and not even coming top three because then the GC contenders, etc., came past him. But in case you haven't heard of me before, Jonas Vingegaard on Team Jumbo Visma. I think he's 24 years old, winner of today's stage five at the UAE Tour. His first World Tour win was Tour de Polonia 2019 when he beat Pavel Sivakov and Jai Hindley in the, uh, I think, stage six to Zakopanya. Good win for him there. But most of you will probably know him from his performance at the Vuelta last year, particularly on the Angla Rue. It's his distinctive style. He came 14th on that stage after setting pace for a long time on the Angla Rue. Also good to see Alexei Lutsenko showing pretty good form. We thought he'd do well on Jabel Hafid and even at Tour de la Provence, and he didn't do well there. Lost 10 minutes on Hafid, but maybe that losing that much time let him go on the breakaway. It was a hot day and he suffered a lot, and it was a shame he couldn't at least get a top three on the stage. And here are the stage results. Wingergaard first, Pagacha second, Yates third, Igita fourth, Almeida fifth, Nick Schultz, another good result for him, sixth, up there with the big boys, Sepku seventh, Poles eighth, Hermans ninth, and Bouchard tenth. Tane Pagacha obviously keeps the leader's jersey, Yates and Ineos weren't able to attack him or put him under any pressure today at all, and I think Pagacha was doing it pretty easy at the end. He's 45 seconds ahead of Yates and a minute 12 ahead of Almeida, Harper fourth, a minute 54 back, I think. Unless there's a lot of crazy wind in the next couple of stages, GC is pretty much a wrap. But onto those next stages, stage six from Dubai to Palm Jumeirah, 165k stage, pretty much pancake flat. And there's two intermediate sprints. I think they go onto the Al Quadra uh, cycle track out of Dubai. I think Wout on Twitter told me there could be some cross tailwind, but I'm not sure if he's just teasing me. It's likely going to end up as a bunch sprint once again. Can Sam Bennett make it two in a row in the sprints or Caleb Ewan or Ackerman get revenge? And one thing I want to mention, Alex Dowsett put this up on Instagram, and apparently the commissaires in the UAE to a stage five were telling him that he couldn't uh, ride with his forearms on the bars in mock TT position. Now, that's a rule coming in on the 1st of April. It's not enforceable yet, and I don't know what on what grounds they were telling him not to do it because... They were telling him not to do it. How come Ineos, for pretty much the all day, chasing down that very breakaway, they were in mock TT position the whole time, and both of them are perfectly allowed. It's not against the rules yet. Roe, Amador, and Co. use that position a lot on the front. It definitely makes a big difference when you're fighting into the wind. And Dowser even said it meant he couldn't take pulls for as long. So maybe that cost Alexei Lutschenko the stage today, who was only seven seconds behind the winner, Jonas Wingergaard. But anyway, it's obviously a big surprise to me that these new rules are being enforced already uh, inconsistently 
And with riders then rightly feeling aggrieved, UCI obviously has a good track record with consistent rule enforcement. But that's all from me today. We'll see you for the Stage 6 highlights of the UAE Tour tomorrow. Ciao.